Good day, and welcome to MCTV News. I'm Rob Petrie. And I'm Parker Yoakums. Spring break is over, and MCC has been celebrating the coming of spring with a variety of fun activities throughout the week. We'll take a look at some brave individuals seeking the thrill of chasing a storm. A couple of students having fun with laser guns. And finally, we'll get the scoop on the latest in police surveillance. All this and more coming up next on MCTV News. I'll get you! You a gang for real? <laughs> Man, why I gotta see you again? Man... <sighs> Texting and driving kills. Spring is celebrated at MCC with coffee, movies, and more. We talked to faculty member Chris Breeze about the fling. Um, well, we're having a splint, spring fling week, um, so just an activity every day this week. So starting for the first day back from spring break, everyone's a little sluggish, tired, so we thought, what a better thing than coffee. So we brought in Starbucks from 10 to 12 before lunch, so um, just for all students, faculty, and staff to enjoy. That kicks off our spring fling week. Kirk Stroller is reporting for the Vegas Light Casino Night that was held in the Student Union at MCC Wednesday night. This Wednesday night, as part of MCC's Spring Fling Week, we have Casino Night. So students have the opportunity to gamble for three hours. Um, then it's also, there's awareness things, so we put out pamphlets about gambling addictions and stuff like that because it's just for fun. And then at the end, they get tickets per so much money that they have, and then they're put in for raffle for basket prizes. The casino night featured a variety of games such as blackjack, Texas Hold'em, roulette, and slot machines. There's a fairly good turnout for the event, and all of the students seem to be having a very good time. Overall, it turned out to be a very fun evening. Well, you know what they say, what happens in Vegas? That's not all from the spring fling, though. Students have been shooting each other with lasers. Here at Mustang Community College, spring fling, we continue with laser tag. Everybody's having so much fun, it's out of this world! I'm James Gaffney, reporting from Big TV News. Quite cool, isn't it? Thank you, James. How do you feel about the police listening to our phone calls? For more on that story, we go over to Emily Barsky. Technology is more diverse than we can imagine. One new technology allows police to catch suspects by eavesdropping on their phone calls. While these tools help prevent crime, some may argue they infringe upon our privacy rights. I interviewed students and staff to ask their opinion on this issue. Do they have actual evidence that there might be something illegal going on and they should listen to it uh, just for safety purposes? Only with special permission from courts. If the person is a suspect and they have a warrant, then they have gone through the proper channels and it, eavesdrop is technically yeah, if that's a term you want to use, it's legal, but in essence, just doing it on a whim, no, I don't agree with it. Uh, people with phone calls are private. People deal with private business. Yeah, I think if they have probable cause and they're trying to catch bad guys, then I guess I would be okay with that. I think that's like not respecting, not respecting the privacy that we should have. Um, it's important for us to have privacy. No, I, I, I definitely, if we're talking about a national policy with the NSA, who is filtering all of our phone calls and our online uh, transactions, I'm not in favor of that. I absolutely am not. I think that's an invasion of privacy and um, totally not down with it. And I don't want no one to be there hearing what I'm saying on the phone, so it's not necessary. I mean, I wouldn't have anything to hide, so. 
I need uh, I need privacy for my for myself, and I don't want uh, everybody to know about my problems or what what I need to know. <laughs> I would just like to know that somebody's listening. If I knew they were gonna listen to it, I wouldn't put nothing in my personal life right there. It's still unclear what role the police should have in cell phone surveillance. In the meantime, remember your private phone calls may not be all that private. For McTV News, I'm Emily Barsky. Thanks for that story. Luckily, I have nothing to hide. And now over to some brave people that are not afraid to be blown away. Give us the scoop, Jenny Parker. Hi, I'm here at the Marshall County Sheriff's Office where they're showing off the new storm chasing vehicle, Dorothy. The Iowa Storm Chasing Network team brought Dorothy, a 9,000-pound armored vehicle special made for storm chasing, to the Marshall County Sheriff's Office. Um, the Iowa Storm Chase Network is um, the people that put it together. Um, it consisted of some guys that um, they like the chasing tornadoes. We've got one guy in the group that does that, one that's a meteorology student and then a couple of them that were actually auto body. The goal with Dorothy is to get closer to storms and shoot them in slow motion video. The, the, the camera will go right here. They're mounted on both sides, so it, it's interchangeable. But the goal is to sort of slow that video down and maybe give it, you know, possibly give it to structural engineers so we can better build houses that are more tornado resistant. So, because if you can slow that tornado down and see what goes first during the storm, then you can really use that for your advantage, and that's what our goal is. So we don't plan on intercepting tornadoes, but it is a, a safety goal. So. We took the most safety precautions we could while building this thing. So, um, so the guys kind of got together. They'd, ar they'd already had the one vehicle that has their equipment in it, um, and they decided they wanted to build one of these uh, storm chaser, a little more maybe safe is kind of what they said. The visiting of Dorothy was part of the Severe Weather Awareness Week event sponsored by Marshall County Emergency Management. And they're um, from the Bondurant area so that they um, are fairly close to us and that's kind of why I invited them up and I'd like to definitely work with them so that if we have storms that they can bring information or call information back to me. So. This attracted national news and dozens of people. The work to further secure the residents of Iowa and the rest of the United States from severe weather continues. I'm Jenny Parker reporting for McTV News. That story sure got me spinning. Thanks, Jenny. That's all from us here at McTV News. I'm Rob Petrie. And I'm Parker Yoakums. Until next week, goodbye and good night.